Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. Welcome back, guys. And I don't always say it, but make sure if you do enjoy this work, you like, share, and subscribe all over wherever we are. Yes. <laughs> Whether that's on uh, Brighty and Rumble, BitChute, three channels on YouTube, Ko-Fi, and of course, our Patreons that help us to keep doing this because we couldn't do it without the support we do receive at patreon yes we definitely definitely appreciate that because if we have given to you and if you found value and things that we have to offer this is a great way to you know give us a, a a thumbs up back absolutely um you know here we go and we're deeper deeper into 2024 i cannot believe that there's only one more week to go and we'll be out of January already. It just seems time is flying. And it seems that the uh, unveiling, after all, that's one definition of the apocalypse, is the great unveiling, uh, is unveiling a lot more to a lot more people every day. And here we see a new poll. Okay, it's latest PA poll testing general election for POTUS in a matchup between 45 and 46. This poll says... 46 is getting 46.8 percent and uh, 45 is getting 39.3 percent not sure 7.6 percent other 5.6 percent uh yeah you know uh you would think that these are normal times with with numbers like this with the incumbent with the lead these are not normal times and you know i, I think people are gonna have a hard time buying a lot of things in these days. Let's just listen over here. There is another protest being escorted now, right now, right in front of me as we are speaking. As you said, you're a very bumpy spar. At least a dozen times, protesters have interrupted the president's speech over his handling of the Israel Hamas war. Those past protests still ongoing here, and it really underscores how that issue has divided the Democratic Party. But look, this speech it is still ongoing the president is fired up he is angry and he's fired up he's angry you know this is this is hearkening back to gosh i don't know a year and a half two years ago maybe it was even longer um but when cindy was looking at 2025 in a remote viewing sense she saw that you do not have any politicians really out there in public they wouldn't dare because it's gotten to the point then that you know it just think of you know pitchforks and torches and you know the villagers are worked up well really people are so tired of it they're tired of the 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 illusion is on its way out it's it's been on its way out people understand what they see now they have a good idea of what's going on but they're still putting up all of this information as if it is real and true and i just don't see people being able to carry on with this type of show this type of circus for too much longer without really there being something definitely serious going to happen here it's coming more than one thing is coming uh, this is going to be a very interesting year, to say the least. Here you have, uh, let's go back here. This is Trudeau. Let's make sure, there we go. Mr. Trudeau, the federal court has ruled that the Emergencies Act was unconstitutional. Would you resign or apologize to Canadians for violating their rights? Yeah, yeah. So the uh, federal court verdict ruled that his invoking of the Emergencies Act was unconstitutional. Uh, yeah, you know, the people are waking up. I think you have pressure in more ways than one that's being applied to maybe politicians, judges that are kind of riding the internal fence, you know, and are going to have a harder and harder time going along with what they know is n not the truth, not what's really being voiced. they getting tired of having to cover for obvious deception. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's getting pretty deep. You know, everybody is getting their own personal shovel these days. 
Yeah, 2024 is going to be the most explosive year we have ever seen in our lifetimes. I, I think that's a safe bet. As we're looking here, we see farmer protests begin in Lithuania. Um, in France, you know, again, there's farmer protests going on here. Uh, they blockaded the motorway, dump manure in front of government buildings and protests. Wait until they officially declare that we are all going to war against each other. This is when uh, the real revolutions start within the country because they will go ahead and invoke drafts. They will try to pull us all into their conflict. And really, we know. We, we know. It, it's to take attention off of what they did. It's to take attention off of what they've been doing for, for forever. You know, it makes me think again. We're in a very similar time to this, April 12th through 14th, 1861. The first shots were fired on a Union fort in South Carolina that the Union uh, soldiers were refusing to leave. This is uh, Fort Sumter, and this is right off the coast in the harbor of Charleston. Um, amazing city. It probably still is my single favorite city in the country. Uh, historically, you know, this this was the beginning of the bloodiest time for the U.S. And contrary to what they want to say, it wasn't just about slavery. Oh, no, no, much, much more. It, it was a stepping stone in the whole system that we currently have. They always divide and conquer. So th this is Greg Abbott. The Texas National Guard continues to hold the line in Eagle Pass. Texas will not back down from our efforts to secure the border in Biden's absence. So Abbott is saying Texas will not back down from their efforts to secure the border in Biden's absence. This is today. This is after uh, the court ruled that the feds could come back in, you know, Border Patrol and start taking it back down well <laughs> what's texas doing texas is putting up more oh yeah again this is very reminiscent of 1861 in so many ways but it's like 1861 going into 1941 or 1914 because what we have going on already is a world war at the same time that you have the civil war going on and then you're going to throw into the mix that the citizens all over the world are tired of their governments. Wow. I mean, wow is all you could say. This is a hang on tight, hang on tight, you know, <laughs> situation. Because this is going to, uh, it's going to be a bumpy road all through 2024. But it has to happen. You know, people like uh, Chris, Christia Freeland here and Trudeau, etc. Ah, uh, that karma word, she can be a, well, you know, we want to see real change. And what we have going on is a lot of chaos as there is a manhunt underway and at least eight people lost their lives here. This is the suspect right here in uh, what's been called by some police officers the worst, um, the worst shooting they've ever encountered. Two different houses, um, and again, eight people losing their lives. And this guy that's been a policeman for 29 years said, this is probably the worst crime scene I've ever been associated with. Uh, they, they do believe they were all family members, some from Nigeria. Uh, interesting uh, and crazy times that we are in. Here you see a spokesperson again, another... <laughs> Another sign that this is not going to ease up. Tonight's airstrikes against uh, facilities in Iraq of Hezbollah changes nothing, and Hezbollah is going to continue with their targeting of U.S. forces in Iraq and Syria. And, you know, again, Hezbollah time and time again has cowed down before Israel. But this is different because Russia, China, and many other nations are all aligning together. And this is not going to be the same situation that we've seen in the past. Uh, a post here by Stu Peters. The railroad to Auschwitz was built by the American financier and railroad magnate Harriman family. 
the Harriman family, very, very rich family, using American Carnegie Steel and powered by American Rockefeller Standard Oil. Prescott Bush, grandfather to the, yes, and we do agree, uh, that statement about George W. Bush was also a founding member of the firm Brown Brothers Harriman. Wonder if they mentioned this during uh, Elon Musk's and Ben Shapiro's recent trip to Auschwitz. Yeah, and the Ford Motor Company used <coughs> concentration camp labor to, you know, pad the profit sheet. Again, I don't understand how anybody couldn't understand how the military industrial complex is making a killing in more ways than one with the nonstop warfare. And it, it's, it's at so many different levels, so many different levels. Well, I mean, this is just pointing out one way that, that war makes money. I mean, just one. And there's so many other ways. Oh, yeah. You could go on and on because, again, everything from bandages to aspirin to morphine and all sorts of heavy-duty uh, painkillers for the people that have lost their legs, been wounded, etc. prosthetics. Yes, and when people have psychological issues because of the traumas, they, they run over and they get a script. It's endless. It, it just is an endless cycle. And so when does the cycle end? It ends when the world realizes that the world's been played big time. And this is all about just perpetuating a nonstop cycle of destruction and disaster. Do you see how the families, these elite families, make out? They obviously make out. It's on the blood of the average pe people. And this has been going on forever. For, for In my estimation, again, I'd say 5,000 years. All of what we would call the Kali Yuga. Uh, and now we're entering a new time period where people's consciousness is changing, which that's their number one objective. Slow down the awakening. Slow down the aha moment that so many people are having. And, you know, it was wonderful. Again, I mentioned BP a lot and I just like him. You know, he's a good guy. And <laughs> on that video where he was saying, you know, I guess Yahweh isn't the creator of the universe. No, Yahweh is not the creator of the universe. And now he, he's, he's got a link up. Go check out the fifth kind. Uh, maybe read into these Anunnaki people a little bit. All we can do is applaud that they've applaud that they've awakened and are starting to recognize that, okay, well, you know, the left-right is really a paradigm that's all about controlling us. So do we really have a democracy? Do we really have a republic? Do we really count when we actually pull a lever or punch in numbers or write something down? Does it ever really matter? And going beyond that, well, how much money is the doctor going to make if he, you know, really tells me, well, the best thing you could probably do is is maybe change your diet a little, exercise more, get some fresh air, and, you know, cut back on, on the alcohol. That's what I would do, you know. It, instead, no, no, here you go. Go get that filled because I know you're going to be back later and you'll need something else filled and you'll need something else filled and you'll need another thing filled. And it's re just repeat customers. You know, and I, I, I just, I really have to say the, the saddest thing about it is if these were our only options that, that okay, you have to eat better. you got to go out and find that non-GMO, good, healthy food. You have, to, you have to stop drinking. And they didn't offer all of these other pills and all of these other cheap tricks and Band-Aids and stuff. People would not be so sick. They, they would have to find a way. And that is the way. It's just, it's hard. It takes time. And I get that. People are exhausted. But if you get some direction and if you're really, really determined that you want to change your life, you can. But you have to let go of the old ways, of the old band-aids, of the quick fixes. Is it easy? No, 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 not at all. I went through years of getting out of the Western medical system. It was very difficult. And I still have problems today, but not nearly what they used to be. But people have to be determined and you have to take away those other quick fixes, which is tough. Absolutely. So 158,000 more Americans died in the first nine months of 2023 compared to the same period in 2019, which is more than all the fatalities in every war since Vietnam. 
mostly young. That people that should not be dying young are dying young. And there's an obvious reason why, and yet they do everything they can to cover it up. There's actually multiple reasons, and really it's the fact that we live in a, a very, very toxic environment. And, you know, the system does not have our best interests in mind. But this little guy has his little guy's best interests in mind and wants to share the warmth of a fire. Yes, kindness matters. Understand, too, instead of like, you know, and again, I know you guys understand. It's just a random person that might be listening for the first time or something that might not understand where we're coming from. It's it's all about compassion and understanding because so many people that are immigrating in illegally are doing so because their life has been so brutal where they were and they are been they have been forced in so many ways to uproot themselves because that's how horrible things have been whether it's the war that's been going on for so long in Syria or Yemen uh, or in Afghanistan or the wars in Iraq and we could go on and on and on you know so many of or Venezuela with their economic suffering so many of the people from these nations have made their way across the border and it's the suffering that's caused by the system on them that causes them to uproot search for a better way and yeah so many of them again look at the people in Gaza it, what's happening there is just it, it's on a par with what happened in Auschwitz and you don't well I know you do but anybody that couldn't understand the anger the sadness the the just despair it, it just I, you have to be able to understand that otherwise you know where's your heart well, look at the the ability to get information out there. So I, I think anyone who is not able to see that, it's because that they simply don't want to. They're, they're, they're not looking very deep because information is everywhere. It's everywhere. And if people want to see the truth, they can. And some just simply don't. Absolutely. So, as always, guys, thanks for your support. Stay prepared out there. Keep putting out the positive intentions. Find opportunities to show a little kindness wherever you can. Much love. Namaste. Namaste.